Welcome to our crash course in science and engineering practices. These are what scientists and engineers actually do. And since this is NGSS in your classroom, this is what your students are actually doing. Now there are eight practices, so let's get started. The first SEP is about wondering. It's about cultivating curiosity. And this is a really important part of NGSS. It's not just asking questions out of curiosity, though. It's using those questions to help advance scientific investigation. And we're going to have to train our students how to do that. Now, one important thing about this is that this is where the students are asking the questions. A teacher asking really good prompts, that's, that's an important part of good instruction. But that doesn't count as SEP1, where we want the students to be doing the practice. And that means we need to devote specific time and curricular space for students to ask questions at all points while they're doing all the rest of these practices. SEP1 also has an engineering component. And engineering is all about solving problems. Uh, it's about grappling with the nature of an engineering challenge, making a list of desired goals or outcomes, determining how we're going to measure those goals and outcomes, thinking about the rules or constraints, such as available materials, all these things go into the very first step in solving a problem, which is defining it. The idea of a model in NGSS might be a little bit different than you might expect. Uh, usually when we talk about models in NGSS, we're talking about a conceptual model of a system. It's going to maybe illustrate some of the cross-cutting concepts. Maybe this is going to be a pictorial model that will show how cause and effect relationships are happening. Or maybe it's going to trace out the flow of energy or matter in a, in a, a food web. Uh, pictorial models like concept maps are some of my favorites. Now, a model is not a representation. Those are two different things. A model must be able to be used to either explain or predict something. It's not just about representing what that object looks like. In NGSS, we don't use the word experiment as often as we use the word investigation. And that's because an experiment is just one type of an investigation. We also have started to use this new word here in the elementary level, the idea of an explorament. It's an investigation driven by exploration, where students are really engaged with phenomena, trying to discover things for themselves. Investigations in NGSS are not step-by-step -step recipes, where students do a hands-on demo to verify or show a fact that they've been told. Or This is really about them discovering things for themselves. And that's why uh, they need to be involved in both the planning part and the doing part of the investigation. During an investigation, we're collecting some sort of observations, data. Now these can be either words and descriptions about what we see, or they could be numbers. Either way, we want to be at the end of our investigation, coming back and looking at our data, spending time trying to describe trends or patterns that we see there. If you're just doing an investigation, collecting a whole bunch of measurements and not looking at them, you're not doing SCP-4. Sometimes our investigations don't provide the results that we'd expect based upon the lesson plan. SCP-4 reminds us that we don't want to spend our time telling students what the data should show based upon what we expected. Instead, we want them to be engaging in analyzing and interpreting the data that they collected, describing the trends and the patterns that they actually saw, even if they're different than what we wanted them to see. Math and computers are a huge part of science today. And so SCP-5 is about using math skills to make sense of science. And in the elementary level, we're looking a lot at things like graphing and geometry as key ties. This SCP is not just a math extension for practicing math skills. I see this a lot in a lesson plan where there will be an extension for math, which is essentially just an opportunity to do a word problem uh, and practice the common core math. What we're looking for here is we're looking for situations where math actually helps the students understand the science better. That's one of the reasons why I've highlighted graphing here, uh, because graphing is going to be a key tool that scientists use to understand what they've seen in their experiments and their investigations. Many times in science, the ultimate product we're looking for is an explanation of what happened, describing how or why something happened. In NGSS, we're often scoring explanations using a claim, evidence, reasoning rubric. We might use a sentence frame like, I think that 
and we have provide a claim about something that happened. Because I saw, and then we list our evidence of what we actually observed, and that tells me, and then we provide our reasoning. And our reasoning often includes things about our prior knowledge where we say, because I know. At the early elementary level, students' explanations primarily focus on just describing what happened. As they're moving towards middle school, they're trying to describe the mechanisms. And the upper elementary grades are really a bridge between those two. SCP-6 also has an engineering aspect. And the ultimate product of the engineering process is really a solution to a problem. So we want to give practice at designing solutions. And that often involves an iterative cycle of brainstorming, building, optimizing, uh, testing is involved in this cycle as well. Now this designing solutions is not trial and error. We want our students to be able to explain why their solution works and not just happen upon it. Arguments are very closely related to explanations uh, in NGSS in that they have a claim that you're trying to convince somebody about and you use evidence and reasoning to convince them. So some say the difference between an explanation and an argument is that an argument must address some sort of counterargument, either implicitly or explicitly. You, you need to be arguing against something. The last SCP has three components, obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. This is essentially a huge part of the Common Core ELA skills, uh, all rolled up into one SCP. It's about learning how to search for the information you need, reading and understanding texts, comparing different sources, deciding how to communicate to a specific audience, and that's a big part when you're creating your own communications products, is thinking about and targeting it specifically to a specific audience. And a communication can be written, oral, or visual. And visual communication includes drawings, presentations, posters, videos, even physical objects, anything that is, involves you communicating what's inside your head to the rest of the world. This SCP is not the same as simply reading informational texts and doing comprehensional questions at the end of the chapter.